This video tutorial is provided by the College of Graduate Studies at UCF. In this video, I will review requirements for using heading styles within a UCF ETD, provide an example of headings within the sample ETD, and demonstrate how to modify and apply styles to your Word document. For a UCF ETD, each heading must begin on a new page with adequate and consistent space below the heading to separate it from the text. The font size should be between 12 and 14 points, and each heading must be centered on the page and typed in all capital letters. Do not apply the All Caps Formatting option because this will not be carried over when the table of contents and PDF bookmarks are generated. For chapter headings and major sections, there are two types of heading styles, pre-content and heading one. UCF ETDs require both heading styles to separate front matter that needs a PDF bookmark from body content and back matter that need both the PDF bookmark and a table of contents entry. These headings are necessary to generate a linked PDF document, such as the sample ETD, which is available in the thesis and dissertation web course. As you can see in the sample ETD, the bookmark bar to the left lists all the major sections of the ETD. However, the abstract, acknowledgments, and table of contents headings do not appear in the table of contents of the document. Because the bookmarks bar displays all titles with the heading format applied, the front matter sections must have a heading style applied. The pre-content style allows front matter titles to be read as headings, but also to be removed from the table of contents. The table of contents is then able to generate a list of entries that does not include the pre-content. In this table, you can see which sections are considered to be body content and back matter. This video will focus on sections which receive the Heading 1 style, so we will only be working with sections following the table of contents. In your Word document, turn on the Show Hide button to reveal all formatting changes. You can see that where I press the Enter key, it creates a paragraph mark, or backwards P, which signifies a hard return. Since we are only focusing on headings that follow the table of contents, we will begin with the list of figures. In the Styles section of the Home tab, you will see the pre-existing Heading 1 style created by Word. However, it does not apply formatting appropriate for UCF ETD. So before I use this style, I will need to modify it. First, I will place my cursor in front of the title, then move up to the Styles menu. Clicking on the small box in the corner of the menu will open the Styles window, which allows you to see more choices. To modify Word's pre-existing Heading 1 style, move the cursor over Heading 1 option and click on the arrow to the right of the text. Choose Modify from the drop-down menu. This opens a modified font window to change the settings for Heading 1 to those appropriate for a UCF ETD. You should not change the name of the style. You can see that it is based on Normal, which is the style designated for body text. The bottom half of this menu is concerned with modifying the font. You may select any standard and legible font for your heading text. I will set the font's point size to 14, make it bold, and set the color to black. I'm also going to center the heading because each heading must also have adequate and consistent space below the heading to separate it from the body text, I'm also going to change the paragraph settings. This is accessed through the Format menu in the bottom left corner. From the drop-down menu, choose Paragraph, which will open another menu. For the spacing option before, set it to zero so that the heading remains aligned with the top margin. To create space between the heading and body text, 
change the space after to 24 points. This will add two blank lines following each heading. Before leaving this menu, ensure that the box next to Don't Add Space between paragraphs of the same style is checked. Click OK to close the menus. With the cursor in front of the title list of figures, click the Heading 1 button. You will see that it automatically centers the title and applies the appropriate formatting. You will also notice a small black square alongside the left margin. This is a formatting mark showing that a style has been applied to the text. Now you can apply Heading 1 to all other major headings following the table of contents. If you need to make modifications to the chapter heading style later on, open the Styles window and modify the Heading 1 style directly. This ensures modifications are applied consistently throughout the document. If you happen to have a long chapter title, you may wish to place part of the title on the next line. You can accomplish this by using a soft return by pressing Shift plus Enter. You will see a small arrow as a formatting mark indicating the soft return. A soft return indicates that the next line is a continuation of the first. Pressing Enter alone creates a hard return and places the heading text on a new line as if starting a new paragraph. The table of contents will pick up this new heading, causing you to have multiple entries in the table of contents as well as the PDF bookmarks. This concludes the video tutorial for headings. If you have any further questions, please use the Format Help section of the Thesis and Dissertation Services site. You may also refer to the PDF instruction file, Headings and Subheadings. For more video tutorials, please return to the Graduate Thesis and Dissertation web course.